This is Pastor Richard with Higher Things, and you're watching Hymnal 101. Now that hymn that I just tried to play is called Oh Love How Deep. It is an ancient hymn dating back to the 13 and 1400s. In fact, the tune itself is from the 15th century. And we often sing these tunes in churches to things such as an organ. Now, I'm certainly not gifted enough to play an organ. Organists use both hands and feet as well. But what exactly is going on with the different music, the different hymns in our hymnals? Well, if you open up the pages of a hymnal, you will find that there's some seven, eight, nine hundred different songs printed for us as a church to sing. And when we sing these hymns, we are essentially, we want to understand essentially that we're singing the word of God. Many of these hymns are poetic uh, forms of God's word. Many times there also could be sermons themselves declaring a message. And then the church has chosen to take the beauty of music and to wrap that music, to clothe and to elevate that word of God. If you think about it, speech is a wonderful thing to be able to talk, but when we sing, it's an elevated speech. We take God's word and we elevate it and we clothe it with the beauty of music to sing it not only in the church, but home as well. Now, I know for myself growing up and even to this day, I'll listen to a song on Pandora or the radio and I'll say, you know, that's a catchy tune and I may be really attracted to the beat, to the music. And I'll maybe say, well, that's a good song. And, and oftentimes you have to pause and say, well, what exactly am I saying or singing myself? And oftentimes words in our present music, they go lost on us and we just listen to the beat, but not with the church. The church focuses on the word that we're singing. And we say this word is so great and so wonderful. We're not going to cover it with music, but clothe it with the beauty of music itself. So as we consider the hymns and the songs that we sing in church and at home, I'd like to encourage you to check out uh, what you're saying, to be very attentive to the word that you're saying. And then also to look at the very bottom, there's some neat little footnotes on the bottom of every hymnal, uh, of every hymn song, and you'll see when it was written. Uh, like I said, this one was written in the 1300s and 1400s, and the tune itself uh, that it was written in the 15th century. And why this is really neat to consider is this, is if you consider an ancient song such as this one, it's been around for some 600 years just to contemplate and to think, my goodness, I'm singing this song with my great grandparents and the saints that have come before me. And not only that, I'm singing it with Christians all around the world. I mean, for goodness sakes, if a, if a song, if a hymn has survived 600 years, it's going to be on multiple content, continents in multiple languages. You see, when it comes to music itself as well, in our culture, we often listen to the top 10 list of the Billboard uh, music list. And these songs are here for a moment. They're in the uh, multi-million uh, dollar movies themselves. And we hear them on the radio for a time and a period. But then after that, uh, they're gone. Uh, they don't last the test of time. But these hymns, as we look at these hymns and as we see these hymns on these songs clothing this precious word of God, we see that they last the test of time, oftentimes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years sung on multiple continents. For us as the church, singing the faith with those who have come before us and those across the other side of the world as well. So have fun singing the hymns, uh, checking them out, knowing that they're clothing God's word and that we are singing that glory and that majesty of God's word, uh, not only for those around us, for, for those around us to hear, but also for us as well to hear that for ourselves, the good news of the gospel, to hear who the Lord is for us as a part of our piety, as a part of our worship, as a part of declaring for our own ears to hear the beauty and the majesty of the word. So I hope that helps and we'll catch you next time.